I, I would uh, give a very brief introduction about myself. Now, I started um, uh, as a teacher, uh, a very humble teacher. And I, do, I never know that I can come up with writing a textbook, you know. And then I became a lecturer at the National Institute of Education. <coughs> and then followed by, after, recently, uh, after uh, I retired, and I end up with um, well, doing a, a, a study uh, at the University of London, uh, King's College London, uh, specializing in, uh, in the primary mass education. So our, what is the ultimate objective you know, in, in education, in, in life? What is our objective? I always tell parents when I, when I give talks to the parents who bring the children uh, who listened to my presentation in Singapore. So what is the objective? So the, the main aim of education, I always tell them is, you like your child to grow up uh, to be a CEO. <laughs> now, who doesn't want the children to, to be very bright and, and, and be excel in life? You know, every parent would like the children to excel in life. Now then, if you really want your child to excel in life, what must they have in the first place? Uh, not just to do a bit of calculation or anything. So you need to have more than just calculation. Now, I always believe that uh, to become a CEO or become, uh, to excel in, uh, in your career, you must have the two forms of thinking. That is, you must have creative, uh, uh, this uh, critical thinking and creative thinking. You need to have these two. Uh, in order to do well uh, in life. So today's uh, presentation is about uh, critic thinking and critic thinking and how we can actually relate uh, these two areas of thinking through problem solving in mathematics. Can I use mathematics to teach children, uh, children to be more creative and creative thinking? So Edward de Bono came up with an idea of uh, creative thinking. Now, if you have read this, uh, The Six Heads, a book given, uh, uh, written by Ever de Bono, so I pick up some of the, his ideas here. Now, his attribute is provocation. So he believed very strongly that provo provocation must be there. In order that uh, you, you trigger uh, creativity, you must be there. Uh, provocation. He did, he did not mention, you read uh, his book uh, on, on this, uh, the green hats. This come under green hats. He never mentioned a word of critical thinking. But the processes that he talked about involve critical thinking. So the next thing is, he said it must be deliberate and formal. So you cannot just uh, uh, leave it alone, uh, let the uh, the, the, it's natural and the thing that, that evolve, you know. There are not many cases that the situation can evolve to trigger you. But according to the Edward de Bono, in order to create uh, creativity, you need to be uh, deliberately provoke the person. Now, he also talked about exploration. From there, you had to explore uh, all the possibilities and that's where they, we talk about the alternatives. Uh, these are the two, uh, the two main uh, key features that Edward uh, de Bono uh, came out uh, in his book. And it aligns parallel to what I did. Now, during that time, 28 years ago, I have not read his book. And yet, the things happening is exactly what Edward de Bono said. So, is it coincident? It's not coincident. It's a fact that if you really want to talk about creativity, these are the things that must happen. Now, these are some of the things that uh, he, uh, I pick up from his book. So you need to judge thinking out of norm. And also, deliberate use of provocation, which I mentioned earlier. Now, another attribute, explore different alternatives and remove constraints, if possible. And use the reversal method. And he also wrote about very interesting things, the crazy provocations. 
even if you really want to provoke people, you have to come up with crazy things. Free prisoners and set up a small business for them. <laughs> so get all the prisoners out. So provocation, then you start to think whether you, you, do it or you want to do it or you do want to do it. It's a provocation. How to do it? Do you think it's necessary? Uh, do you think it's uh, feasible or not feasible? So close down the sales department. So nobody will sell your books now. <laughs> so OUP had to close down all the sales department. Uh, so who's going to sell your books? So provocation. It doesn't mean that the provocation will work. Uh, but this is the way to help children to start thinking. Now, I'm looking into another scenario. Now, this is the scenario that I personally involve in getting responses from children right, to, to assess the, the critical thinking, uh, how they respond to, to some uh, uh, provoking uh, question. Now, this is a question given to the, uh, the children. So I have a glass ball. I drop it to the floor. What would happen to the glass ball? So it's summary. So year one to year three, very simple response. <coughs> uh, ball will break, nothing else. Uh, four to six, it depends on the types of the uh, floor surfaces, the texture. Then at the higher level, year seven to year nine, they talk about the floor surfaces as the year four and year six, talk about the size, the height, the impact, and all the pieces that smash. So we have different hierarchy of uh, critical thinking. Then the next question is, are we able to train children at the lower age to be more critical? Are we able to help the year one, year three students uh, to think like the year four and year six? Are we able to train children at year four and year six to think like those students at year seven and year nine? Uh, so these are the, the questions which is provoking. Critical thinking involves other attributes. The important thing is to raise vital questions and problems. That's important. So in order to go on to the next uh, step uh, of our education and so on, uh, it is important for us to, to raise uh, vital questions. Uh, like the question that I asked, are we able to train children at year one to year three to think like year four and year six? So are we able to train children at year six, uh, year four to year six, to reach the level at year seven, year nine? Uh, that is vital question. So that is the hypothesis: is we cannot do it. Then you test the hypothesis. Uh, this is what research is about. You, see? you must raise the vital question. So you need to gather and assess relevant information. Uh, in critical thinking. So think openly and come up with an alternate system of thoughts and communicate effectively with others and come to well-reasoned conclusion and solution. Now, this is another perspective uh, in uh, critical uh, thinking. Problem solving can cultivate critical thinking. If you really want to to help the children uh, to develop critical thinking, now, we should encourage them to explore. So it's a provoking question. Uh, you need to explore and look into uh, the alternative. Now, before we look into the, the details on the critical thinking part, uh, thinking part, let's look at how we solve the problem. Well, you have to recall the number bonds, gather information, and you raise wider questions. So what strategy to use? We have to encourage students to talk about it, not just guess and check method all the time. Right. So what strategy? Can we use alternative strategy to solve the problem? So any shortcuts? And then position of the circles? Has this got to do with problem solving or solving the problem? So, are they able to see connections? So that's why it is so important not to, to help children to think critically in problem solving. 
not just get and check all the time. You have to get the children to think critically and the procedure to solve the problem. Now, this is what we want. So we don't want our children just to uh, get and check all the time. Uh, we have to get them to talk about uh, the solutions. Right? So, so this is how we, we, we train our children uh, in Singapore. Creativity requires critical thinking. So from my study and also from my uh, research and so on, my experience and so on, you cannot have creativity without critical thinking. You need to have that. Okay, so, so that's a conclusion I come up with. So the implication is we have to teach critical thinking uh, in order to, to uh, I mean, to, to advance in our education, advance in our uh, society. You need to teach critical thinking. Now, provocation is necessary to trigger creativity. You must have a, a provocation a thought you know, in order to, to come up with this. Now, exploring alternatives is an essential attribute that leads to creativity. Uh, you need to have alternatives. Explore alternatives. Don't just give them the answer. Uh, like some of the questions I mentioned about the rabbits and uh, the chickens. Don't give them the answer. Let them give them some time to think. So if they can come up with something, so uh, it's, it's, it's a way of uh, training children to be more critical. Uh, being able to see connections is another attribute that leads to creativity. They must see connections. Problem solving leads to see connections. Uh, and finally, mathematical problem solving has all the above attributes. So it means that we can train children to be critical and creative through mathematical problem solving, provided that you use an appropriate method not spoon feeding. If you still go back to the old method, spoon feeding, just because you want the, the student to get A star, uh, ignoring the, this aspect of education, then very sorry, the children have not learned something that will be useful in life.